Kingston are well known for making amazing value storage like this, their A400 SSD I've checked out and used before, and so I thought I would check out their KC2000, their new M.2 NVMe offering, but I don't think it packs quite the punch I was hoping for. Now the model I have here is the one terabyte, but it does come in a variety of sizes from 250 gig to 500 to one terabyte to two terabytes, and the model I have, the one terabyte, costs around about 144 pounds at the time of filming in the UK. By the way, if you do want to check out the SSD or see pricing when and where you watch this, because it can and does vary, take a look at that top link in the description down below. Now with that said, the drive uses a Silicon Motion 2262 controller, which is an eight channel, uh, fairly standard Gen 3 controller, is in theory capable of up to 3.5 gigabytes per second in reads and about three gigabytes per second in writes, although this drive doesn't quite reach that. Now Kingston have used their own NAND flash here, it's a 96 layer 3D TLC NAND, which is actually 128 gigs per chip and there's four chips on the drive, as well as a couple of what I believe are DDR3 RAM modules as well, which the controller supports just fine. And taking a look at the benchmark results, it's actually not too shabby either. We're looking at around about three gigabytes per second reads for the synthetic tests, and you're seeing anywhere between 2.5 and 2.8 gigabytes per second in writes, which is actually a good bit higher than Kingston claim for this drive, which is always nice to see. When it comes to my more real world test, which is really just a stress test to test the control controllers read and write performance simultaneously, that actually did not too badly to start off with. I was seeing over a gigabyte per second transfer speed here, which is a pretty good result for this test. Although towards the end of the test, or actually towards the middle, it, the, the speed dropped off a cliff and ended up sort of sawtooth waving its way through most of the rest of the test, leveling out at about five to 600 megabytes per second towards the end. And that result was pretty standard for these sorts of not quite high performance drives as I think what's happening is that their cache fills up, especially considering it's around about 70 gigabytes of files, all individual files that are, uh, are being duplicated here. And so it fills up the cache and then takes a little bit longer than you might like to be able to flush that cache into storage. And then you can fill the cache up again. And that's why you're getting the sawtooth pattern. Now, if you're wondering if the drive thermal throttles, Happily, it doesn't. I was seeing about a maximum of, I think, 55 to 60 degrees Celsius after multiple repeated runs, stress testing the uh, the drive, and so that's actually a pretty good result considering there's no heatsink here and there wasn't any direct airflow on it either, so that's certainly a good option. So the SSD performs pretty well and holds up to temperature, so what did I mean by it doesn't quite pack the punch I was hoping for? Well, for £20 less than the cost of the drive I have here, you can buy the ADATA SX8200 Pro, which is a faster drive for less money. It's actually a reasonable amount faster, both in synthetic tests and in the more real world stress testing uh, tests. And while it did get a little bit hotter, it's also a faster drive and was able to handle my stress tests for longer, especially more uh, sustained writes as well. So uh, that is a better SSD for less money. Now, if Kingston were to drop the price of this drive down to be even more competitive with stuff like WD's Blue SN500, which is actually a significantly slower drive by comparison, that would make it a lot more interesting and a lot more easy for me to recommend. But I think for the time being, it gets a tentative recommendation. If you can find it on sale, it's a great drive that I would happily recommend. But otherwise, if you can't, I think that I'd probably recommend either going for the cheaper option in the WD if you only want up to 500 gigs of storage or going with something like the SX8200 as you get, well, more drive for your money. With that said, would I put one in my rig? Well, like I said, if I could get it on a deal, then yes, I would. I currently use an older WD Black SN700, which is actually almost identical in terms of speed and overall performance. So, uh, you know, I have no problems with running a drive of this uh, class, if you like. But of course, that is a more expensive drive, and so I'd uh, have a hard time, you know, justifying that over other options. But there you go. So those are my thoughts and the benchmark results. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think? of the KC2000? Is it a drive you'd pick up yourself or would you go for something like the SX8200, WD Blues or anything else in between? Do let me know in those comments down below. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, hit that subscribe button with a bell notification icon. 
You can also check out the link in the description, like I said, to the KC2000 if you want to see pricing when and where you watch this. That's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see all of that good stuff. If you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos and subscribing, do take a look at the rest of the links in the description down below too. There's Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you use them. Or there's a lot of other stuff like Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming, merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, and just a whole load of other stuff too. You can also check out the rest of the uh, other videos over there if you want to keep watching. Maybe check out some other SSD reviews. And that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. And we'll see you all in the next video.